Hello, this is the weekend edition of Daily Reflection. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Come, let us worship and praise. The psalmody this morning are verses from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sin and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Bless the Lord, all you hosts of God, you servants who do God's will. Bless the Lord, all you works of God, in all places where God rules. Bless the Lord, O my soul. This week we've been talking about and pondering the ways God surprises us surprises us with the word of forgiveness, surprises us with that coincidence that leads to a blessing. Uh, a mentor of mine calls those God incidences. Surprises us with comfort when the challenges are so bleak before us. This morning, I want to read a passage from Acts chapter 9, where Paul is surprised. At that time, he was known as Saul, rabid in his abhorrence of the Jesus movement, for he saw it as heretical to the teachings of Moses. And then this happened. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of Jesus, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, man or woman, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed before him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Get up, enter the city. You will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with Saul stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Sarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying. 
and he has seen a vision that a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Ananias was stunned and answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much he's evil he has done to your saints. And he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and king and before the people of Israel. I myself will show how much he will suffer for the sake of my name. So our minds are set and we're sure we're right. And then God shows us a different way, the truth of the gospel that heretofore we hadn't allowed to come into our hearts, our consciousness. Or we may be stunned like Ananias, where God asks us to go and bring a word to someone who we think is the farthest from the kingdom of heaven. Frederick Buechner was a noted writer, preacher, and he at one time penned these words. Who knows how the awareness of God's love first hits people? Everyone has their own tale to tell. Who would not believe in God if you paid him? Some might happen in your life that makes you say yes right up to the roots of your hair that makes it worth having been born just to have it happen laughing with somebody till the tears run down your cheeks, waking up to the first no, being in bed with somebody you love, whether you thank God for such a moment or thank your lucky stars, it is a moment that is trying to open up your entire life. If you try to turn your back on such a moment and hurry along to business as usual, it may lose you the whole ball game. If you throw around such a moment and hug it like crazy, it may save your soul. How about the person you saw who, as far as you can possibly tell, has never had such a moment? Maybe for that person, the moment has to happen is you. Let's think about both the moment of God surprising us and the moment where God has chosen us to be the surprise for someone else.
The Lord be with you. Good and gracious God, thank you for the gospel that breaks into our lives at surprising moments to remind us of cross and resurrection, that you are with us and never forsake us, that Jesus has prepared an eternal home for us, and by your Spirit we are bestowed with gifts to carry on your good work in this world. O oh Lord, continue your work of forming us more and more in the image and likeness of your Son, that in our embodying the gospel, we would be ambassadors of your love, that in everything we say and do, we do so as representatives of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you when we miss that mark. There is your forgiveness, your hand that lifts us up but in lifting us up, also instill in us the desire to live your way. We, we pray for our world, for the people of Ukraine, for soldiers on the battlefield. We pray for peacemakers to bring an end to this violence. We pray for the neglected, those that are easy for us to forget. O oh Lord, Help us to hear when you call us, not only to give an offering in the plate, but a presence, a hand to hold, a prayer to say. Oh Lord God, we pray for our nation as it is so divided along cultural issues where politicians gain a, a following by spewing what they don't like about someone instead of making a case on what they stand for as we try to seek, discern your will. Oh Lord, I, I grieve for those who talk Christian and yet spew violence. Oh Lord, you call us in humble submission to your will. Make us instruments of your peace. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we join together three times a week for daily reflection, I also invite you to be one with us on Sunday morning. Worship at St. Paul takes place at 8.15 and at 10.45. You can also join us on our YouTube channel. That's St. Paul Edits. The peace of the Lord be with you this day.